Hey, Weather Warriors. Now, you're probably wondering, when is the next winter storm going to occur? We're getting close to spring. Not many chances left here. And that's what we're going to talk about in this episode. I'm also going to go over the general pattern over the next couple of weeks. This is going to go into early March. So before we begin, I invite you to subscribe below if you like detailed educational weather forecast breakdowns just like this. And hit those bell notifications because this is time sensitive information. It's best to view these right as they come out. So let's get right into it. This is the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook and whoops by the CPC and you can see that uh, they have mostly below average here a good chance of below average in uh, the western US and above average in the eastern US. But you'll notice that this doesn't necessarily matter 100% for snowstorms as I'm about to show you there could be a decent snowstorm out here and maybe one or two in the east half of the United States. All right, now what I've done is I'm showing you the 8 to 14 day precipitation outlook by the CPC and you'll notice that the above average precipitation potential, especially here in the mid-Atlantic, it's overlapped with the warmer than average temperatures, okay? And we'll go over that in a second, what that means. And then it's drier than average here in the western United States. So that's a general pattern for the next uh, couple of weeks here. This is the first thing I want you to look at here. This is uh, the 126 our uh, GFS map for later this month here, not too far from now. Okay, this is the 500 millibar height anomalies. Now, when we come to long range forecasting for storms, it's better look up here in the jet stream than the actual precipitation or those weather apps that show snowfall and, you know, six inches. That stuff changes like crazy uh, this far out. So, what we're doing is we're kind of showing you visually what it looks like, and, and I'm going to show you kind of what the general pattern is here. We got two little troughs here. There could be a little uh, system that moves out around the 25th, but not looking terribly strong. It's this one we want to watch out here, kind of brewing out in the mid uh, northwestern United States. A little trough here around the 25th or so. That could deliver a decent amount of uh, precipitation snowfall for the Pacific Northwest. The storm systems will typically happen where you get that divergence of black lines. That is air getting stretched out in the upper levels and air comes up and fills it at the surface. And that's what we're looking at. It's these little trough areas and those usually have cold air just behind them. And if you look at the precipitation amounts for this time, decent little batch of precipitation out in Idaho, Wyoming, parts of uh, Oregon and Washington, but it's clear for the rest of the country, but that could change here in a second. We'll get out into that area in just a second here. If you look at the 186, this is the 28th now. This is a different story. Okay, so look what happens around 186. This is the 28th of February. This bowling ball dives into the northwestern United States. That is really going to pick up the chances for a big snow and rain event for around the late month, around the 28th or so. Now, this needs to get east for the rest of the country to get in on this thing. Currently, the ridging out here looks to break down. If the ridging is really strong, well, it might have trouble moving to the east. It'll kind of run into it and stall. But the ridging looks to break down, so there could be a wave or two of uh, storm systems in the east half, Midwest, maybe east half of the United States, around the 27th or so through the 3rd or 4th of March. The days are going to change. There's still some uncertainty, but what we're looking at is the signal here, and it's much, it is pointing to a much higher chance for a storm between that 28th and the 2nd time period, and a decent one in parts of the country. This is the 500 millibar vorticity. This is the Canadian computer model. And really the higher levels here, this is the thing we look at far in advance here, the higher levels indicating spin and lift in the atmosphere. And there's plenty of that. A uh, couple of different waves here in the northwestern United States. A wave out here that doesn't look terribly strong though. It's this trough that we're really keeping an eye on. Now in terms of uh, what the precipitation looks like, you can see that lead wave, there is a chance for a little snowstorm in the northeastern United States, rainstorm to the south of that around the 28th. That lead wave doesn't look overly impressive, but we'll watch it. And, uh, you know, right now it looks like a moderate event. If it happens, there's been some inconsistency on that. But I'm really keeping an eye on this area out here. You can see 
a little low here, a little low here, there's a couple of waves, a little a couple of storms that move around that trough. Anytime you get a trough, sometimes it gets short waves, uh, which will develop a little low pressure systems at the surface. You can get multiple storms to develop along the trough, multiple waves. So it's the pattern change that we're really focusing on here. The details will change. So this moves, this is the European computer model, around the same time. So you notice the European computer model with this trough is a little bit farther to the east, but it still shows that really strong signal. So there's some consistency here between the models, at least at getting a trough here. Now, the storm systems with this type of look, you'll notice the ridge is much stronger here, but the trough is also further to the east. But because of the strong ridging here and the strong troughing, that's really creating a significant temperature gradient and you could get a low pressure system kind of right in between there. And uh, so that's something we're gonna have to watch here. Again, this is the 28th. The uh, upper levels, uh, there's some energy down here, then there's some energy up here. Those are kind of split. You'd like to see them w together, but at least there's something there. There's definitely a signal. So if you look at the actual precipitation for the 28th on the European, it doesn't have as much precip out here in the Midwest, northwestern region, but it does have a little piece out here in the Midwest of developing low pressure system. So this is the thing we're going to have to watch. You know, with this type of trough, there could be a major storm, but it, there is definitely some uncertainty in the strength. It's the signal we're looking at here. As we go towards the 1st of March, this thing really digs in. You see that piece of energy, and uh, this is the area you want to watch down here. If this closes off as it moves to the northeast, meaning if these black lines form a circle, it forms its own little pressure, upper level pressure system, that really can enhance the potential for a major storm like a blizzard or a nor'easter. At the moment, it's open. But will that, will that change? I'll show you in a second here. As you can see, the precipitation at the surface for the same time period, when you get these open waves, it's usually flatter. So you get these more linear type of systems with rain out ahead of it and just a small narrow band of snow on the backside. Usually those don't add up to more than about three to six inches with those type of open waves. But if this closes off as it hits the shore, you'll get these comma head type storms, which would in, uh, dramatically increase the potential for a major winter storm. The biggest uncertainty right now appears to be that right there. Is, is it gonna be a closed wave or an open wave? Temperatures around this time, we could get another shot of cold air in early March. Look at that up there in the Midwest, zero degrees in some areas, so pretty cold again. And then as we head towards the first, this is the GFS, you'll see the GFS is even farther to the east, and it's got that nice bowling ball, or not bowling ball, but nice trough right there, sitting right out in the northeastern United States. And there's the vorticity, very strong stripe of vorticity there in the northeastern United States. It's still a little bit open, but it's very, it's got very good lift. And if you look at the uh, precipitation on the GFS, for again, the first of March this is a different model now. A decent band of snow in the northeastern United States from the coastline to about the Canada border and plenty of rain out ahead of it. Again, if this closes off, this would turn into a nor'easter. Now look what just happened. This is uh, as we go towards the second, this is the second of March. Look at those black lines. They have closed off now, significant lift now. Okay, vorticity in the atmosphere. This closes off just off the shore. At the moment, the, the models have been blowing this up just off the shore, and you can see that blizzard type of appearance. Those tightly packed isobars, that's probably 30, 40 mile an hour winds, rain out ahead of it, 965 low, right over the ocean, but it forms offshore. If this moves just about 100 miles to the northwest, which it absolutely could, that would put a major winter storm for the northeastern United States. However, there's a lot of inconsistency in the models, and most of the models have been converging on a farther east solution, like it's blowing up in the ocean. So at the moment, there's significant uncertainty, but again, it's something we want to watch with that trough configuration. If you look at, this is the same time period on the second, if you look at the GDPS, the Canadian, it's actually way off to the west. So while the signal's still there, it still looks like the pattern change between all the models, there's high consistency on a trough blowing up, moving eastward, and a decent ridge out ahead of it around the 
around the late February to early March, but there is some inconsistencies in where this is going to happen and the strength. And you can see the Canadians way farther to the east, and it's got multiple pieces of energy. You'd like to see one piece of energy if you're looking for a big storm, not two, because this is kind of hogging up the energy from this one. You'd like to see one. Uh, but uh, that's kind of the look right there. So kind of broken apart. And you can see at the surface on the Canadian computer model, it's kind of a messy looking storm system, but definitely a large system. You know, when you get those pieces of energy, it's widespread, but usually not overly potent in one area. So light snow up in Canada, the northern U.S., and light rain, maybe some thunderstorms in the eastern half of the United States. So, and behind that, a decent Arctic blast. This, these are the thickness lines. 498 line all the way in the Dakotas, you're talking single digits or lower temperatures. So another blast of air up in the northern U.S. That looks to be pretty uh, likely somewhere in the northern half of the United States, late February, early March, seeing another little Arctic outbreak with a potential system moving from the plains, somewhere the plains into the eastern United States. Now, again, the details, the amounts, just cannot get into that this far out. This is the European. Now this is for the 2nd of uh, March again. We're looking at another European computer model here. It's closed off. So the European closes this energy off. Little bowling ball, a, a ridge to the east and a ridge to the west. Not as cold looking, but it is closed off. There's a decent piece of vorticity. And if you look at the surface, there's your snowstorm right there off the coast and it have a nice arc of snow all the way back into the northeastern United States. So the European is also showing a very similar look than uh, the GFS and the Canadian. However, again, there's been some inconsistencies in whether or not this will close off in time. If it, if it doesn't, if it goes offshore, it'll just be mostly a little stripe of rain, maybe a little bit of snow on the backside, northern side of it and it leaves the country. But if it can close off early, that would significantly increase the prospects for a major winter storm. So the summary here is around the 28th or so, we should see a trough move in. This would give a chance for some precipitation out for the northwestern United States, maybe a significant dose of rain and snow. As it moves east, it, it'll cycle and it, it could create a decent little short wave a little piece of energy that rides up, creates a storm in the Midwestern region, rides up into the coast, and potentially blows up into a significant system. At the moment, it looks like the models are mostly pegging this to occur just offshore, but if it moves any farther to the west, this would really put the northeastern United States under the gun. So our best bet for chances of uh, a big winter storm now through the next couple of weeks appears to be early March you know, first to maybe third of March. But if I were to put a range on it, maybe the 28th through maybe the 4th of March, the timing will change between now and then. Sometimes the models are off a couple of days, you know, when you're looking at this far in advance. But that is the time period we really want to watch. Again, mostly the east half of the United States, but again, the northwestern half can see a decent precipitation band before then. I'll definitely have more updates, guys, and uh, subscribe, share this with a friend. Hope you enjoyed this video. And we'll see you soon.